And good evening. Welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner here from the Highlander Activity Center on this uh, Wednesday night as we pushing through the month of February. 30 degree weather outside uh, in slush. I, I'm enjoying uh, the weather, but we are going to be talking basketball here to start things off. Boys basketball in particular. And Coach Alex Quist from the Highlander Boys joining us. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Paul? Fantastic, fantastic. I know you got semifinals in City League, so you're kind of getting in game <laughs> yeah. mode right now. Uh, let's uh, now. It's been a couple weeks since we chatted. Uh, got a chance to talk with Coach Steckler last week, and uh, so he had some great things to say about that freshman team. And uh, and you know, it's one thing I've mentioned to a couple of people. All of you coaches. Uh, that I've talked to this year when I talk about something your team does consistently well. Hard work seems to be uh, the key word. And I know Coach Steckler said that's another thing that the ninth graders do, but that really is something uh, you guys feel, really love about your guys is the way that they just go out there and compete every night. Without question, and that's something to really be proud of too. Um, and and I love just, you know, this is my third year here, and it feels like that's, that's where Valley City basketball is going, where the younger kids, they see the older kids. And I'm not saying that's the only reason why they work hard. You know, I'm, I'm, I am mean, they're great kids and uh, they work their butts off. Mm -hmm. But that is, I mean, it's just if you don't work your butt off, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb, you know. And so uh, that's something that we've been really happy with uh, throughout our program Uh Honestly, every year since I've been here, I've been happy with that. And so that's definitely something we can hang our hat on. Well, now, the last, we have, didn't talk last week, as I mentioned, because we talked with Coach Steckler. So we're not going to go too far back as far as games. But uh, last week, Fargo South, you had a back-to-back -back night, if memory serves. Fargo South on Friday, Grand Forks, uh, or uh, pardon me, Devils Lake on Saturday. But first, Fargo South, 60-51 uh, final. Just your thoughts on that game against the Bruins. That was one of our more complete games where, I mean, if we didn't start out down by 10 points early in the first half, that's a totally different ball game. And so we just put together a really consistent effort where after we were down by 10, we went on maybe a 15 to 5 run, something like that. And that run was over a span of about 8 to 10 minutes. So it wasn't like it was just quick. We just got all this, all, all this momentum. It was just we, we were really in control of the game. And w our, our goal is to control the pace during a basketball game. And we 100% did that against Fargo South by taking care of the basketball. We limited their second chance, chance points. And then on top of that, we got back on defense and we made them play a slow-paced game. And so, yeah, just over the, the course of that game, uh, I was really happy with how we controlled the pace. Um, and, you know, just it was maybe a three or four point game with, I think, a minute or two left. So um, just couldn't get a couple stops down the stretch. And then South started making free throws. And but I was I was happy with our effort that game. Devils Lake came in the, the next afternoon, so it was not only a quick turnaround because normally at night, but he had to play an afternoon gig. Were you guys uh, as coaches worried at all of uh, maybe rubber legs at all going on in that game? Well, I'll be honest with you. Towards the end of the Fargo South game, I, it crossed my mind. I'm just like, man, some of these kids played a lot of minutes. Okay. And it's one of those things where when you see the light at the end of the tunnel, you can see that wind just within grasp. Sometimes you just want to ride some guys out mm -hmm. that are playing well. And so we did that Friday. And then I was a little bit worried heading into Saturday, and, and I'm not sure if that played a role or not. You know, it's, it's hard to tell, but um, I, th I think we were a little bit fatigued heading into Saturday, um, especially after a, a close. I mean, it was a nine. We lost by nine, but yeah. that was just because they made free throws right, the last minute right. of the game, and we kept fouling them. But uh, there, at the end of the day, I, I have to think back and say they're – 15, 16, 17-year-old boys, they're going to be fine. It, it might affect them a little bit, right. but 
they're not old like us where, <laughs> you know, you play a little while and whoa, the next day you're going to be feeling it. I, I would feel it the same day. I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> who cares about the next day? Uh, but then now here uh, last night, I mean, you had three games in a, in a four or f- uh, five day stretch. Now last night, uh, Fargo Shanley, a very athletic uh, Fargo Shanley team with some length and uh, good shooters. Cause they have the craft boys. But uh, so you knew you were going to have a tussle with the Deacons coming in. Yeah. And honestly, I think that that was probably the best game that they put together that I've seen just watching them on film. Uh, they they shot the I don't think they've shot the ball that well from three. They didn't take a ton of threes, mm-hmm. but they shot forty percent from three against us. And uh, just throughout the course of the year, they haven't been shooting the ball that well. And then um, they they made a lot of interior passes. And like you said, yeah, they're an athletic team too. And so they sort of had their way inside of the paint against us. And they're uh, they're a tough matchup for us. They're they're very very skilled team and mm-hmm. like you said athletic they've got some length and in some spots you know, some positions that we just don't and so um yeah they're they're a tough team and i think that they're 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 a team that could surprise some some other edc contenders uh come edc tournament time well now you guys uh get uh, tonight off and then another Back-to-back coming up this weekend on Friday and Saturday. Uh, Grand Forks Red River comes in Friday night, and then Grand Forks Central, I think, is on, on Saturday. Uh, do you, I'm guessing as coaches, you look at the last game when you played these teams and break down that film. Uh, do you do that? Do you and your staff kind of say, okay, well, here's what happened in Red River, so what, here's what we got to change coming in? Yeah, there's definitely some of that. Now, our first game against Red River actually got postponed, so we haven't played them yet, okay. but in, in our game planning... Uh, the the most recent games that other teams play are, are more important to watch than our game against them. Um, but we definitely do use our film for reference. For example, I mean, we, we, ru- we run a sort of a 2-3 that morphs mm-hmm. into a man-to-man defense. And uh, it's good to see, and, and same with our press, it's good to see what other teams do against us just so we can better prepare for it um, because there's not, there's not really other teams that do what we do on defense. Right. So we can sort of scout um, what they did against us the last time we played. But it's usually more important that we watch their most recent games so we can see um, which kids are playing well, um, their rotations, any defenses that they mix in, uh, and any sets that we might be worried about. Unlike last week, this is a home weekend. Both games are at home, so no travel involved. Uh, Getting a chance to play back-to-back last week, do you feel that's going to help uh, coming into this weekend? Because now they know, that, you know, Friday, Saturday, they got a chance to do it last week, so now they got to do it again? Well, let me tell you what. We've got back-to-back this weekend, and then even the, the weekend after that, uh, I believe it's Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Okay. So, I mean, it, there's just a lot of games bunched in together, and so... Um, I think that, that other teams are pressing to get games in as well. So I think yeah. other teams are, are maybe in the same boat as us. But um, it's it's definitely good to, I mean, the kids are starting to understand, like, this is what it's going to be like. Uh, we're not really going to get time to prep so much for our game on Saturday. It's more or less a quick talk before the game. And we're going to be more worried about ourselves than we are about the other team on, on a second day of a back-to-back. Final question for you, and if I jinx it, it's my fault. You can hang me out to dry. You've been pretty good injury-wise so far this year. Now, I know there is one uh, one guy down uh, with Robert, uh, Robert with, the, with the hand, but uh, other than that, you have been pretty fortunate this year, and so far so good, knock on wood, uh, in, as far as the injury. It's okay, I'm not superstitious. Though, okay. <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm crossing my legs as I say this. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, we have been pretty blessed uh, health-wise. I mean, there's there's always going to be those nagging overuse injuries that some kids have, which is, is going on with probably every team. Um, you probably wouldn't have known it, but uh, uh, before, well, just on Monday, before the game on Tuesday, Andrew dislocated his pinky <laughs> in practice and he toughed it out. We got it taped up, and he said it felt good enough to play. And so, well, that we're we're very fortunate that that didn't take him out of the game. 
And it's just, yeah, it's one of those things. It just needs time to heal. It's not going to get any worse. So we were really happy that we still had him for the game yesterday. Well, back-to-back -back again coming up Friday night, I believe the second game, so 7.30 Friday night. Uh, then Saturday afternoon, late afternoon, another doubleheader with the girls coming up on Saturday. Uh, the Grand Fork School is coming to town, so let's get a, let's, let's see what we can do here. Let's get a couple of Ws now. Uh, how big, just getting a win for the, the psyche of this team. I know these guys, we've talked about the hard work and how close they have come. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's one or two things either way. Just to get that psyche and say, I know we can do this, fellas. It, the law of averages, it's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's a tricky thing because, I mean, we already know that, that we can win, right? I mean, you have those close games, and it's pretty obvious, like, oh, we, we should have had that one. We mm -hmm. should have had that one. But um, especially when it comes to morale, uh, you know, those, those wins, are, they're, they're important, but um, nonetheless, no matter what happens, I, I'm so proud of the way that the boys have handled themselves. Uh, they show up and they work every day. Um, if you watched on Tuesday, I mean, we just got guys that are being active the whole game, whether they're playing or not on the bench, people are supporting each other. And that just shows a lot about the character of the boys we have on our team. And so no matter what happens as a result of these games, uh, I'm confident that, that we know that, that we're capable of, of playing some really, really good basketball and beating some good teams. Um, and, and we're going to show up and we're going to play our butts off no matter what. So. All right. Well, Coach, uh, good luck here tonight for your, your, your game. And then we'll talk to you again this weekend uh, with the, the doubleheaders. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate the time, Paul. You bet. Coach Alex Quiz from the Valley City Highlander Boys will be back with more Coach's Corner here from the Highlander Activity Center on the Highlander Activity Network. Back here on Coach's Corner here at the Highland Activity Center and uh, moving into a band here tonight. And uh, Rebecca Elliott, our band director from Valley City High School, joining us. How are you doing? I'm good. Well, we had EDC here on the Tuesday up in Grand Forks. Yes, and a uh, contest. Let's talk about what, what was involved in that before we talk about anything else. But what was involved with this uh, this contest this week on sure. Tuesday? So um, all the schools in the EDC were uh, had the option to send uh, students in ensemble groups, so small groups of at least two, a max of 12, um, and they prepared pieces and then went to Grand Forks to perform for judges and receive comments and scoring. How did things go? In your mind, how did things go? Good, a good turnout? It went, it went really well, yeah. Um, we had 13 uh, ensembles participate. We had a total of 30. I think it ended up being 34 kids that ended up going, which is a phenomenal amount of kids wanting to go try something new. Uh, for some of them, a lot of a lot of them, it was their first time performing uh, for strangers, right? Right, yeah. which is always yeah. so terrifying. Um, it went really well. It was really smooth. We had a very early morning, but we got on the road. We made it all the way there, um, and then everyone just kind of went, played, and all of a sudden we were done and. <laughs> It, it was yeah. good. It was a good day. Wind ensemble. Uh, what? What? Uh, pretty much an uh, entire band, or what was the main focus? Um. So it, there's a lot of different uh, groups that can go. It was ninth through twelfth grade. So we had some ensembles from senior band, some ensembles from varsity band, some that were a little intermixed, uh, just because we had a lot of weird. Uh, I guess, I don't know what they call it in sports, but like medical injuries yep, yep. where they had to be removed from the roster. <laughs> yep. And um, we had subs go in um, and play with the ensembles. Uh, I think the biggest group we had was a percussion ensemble of six. And then we had some duets of two. So it was a big range. Would Did you guys have to practice for anything? And I mean, do you get a piece ahead of time so you know what you're yes, playing? yep. So they had been preparing. We have spent pretty much the entire month of July, or not July, January. I, I wish, wish it was, was July. July. Jinx. <laughs> ah. um, we spent pretty much the entire month of January preparing each of their pieces. They got to pick their groups, so which friends they wanted to play with for the most part. And then um, I went in the stacks and found some pieces for them to pick through. And then it's pretty much self-guided because I can't be in 13 spaces all right. at once trying to help them. So it's a lot of independence, a lot of uh, leadership roles of making sure you're actually using your practice time and mm -hmm. being um, confident and comfortable. So, yeah, it's all mostly them. 
And that they, you said they get to pick their partners. Does that help them being a little more comfortable because they know who their oh, person sure. they're playing with? Oh, for sure. When you get to stand next to your friend and you kind of like give them the look like, oh my gosh, I'm going to throw up. And you like, you're going to throw <laughs> yep. up too. Like you're, you automatically feel better. Yep. It, so. Cause they can play off one another and, yes. and then they probably know that person's abilities and yeah. they can and do it, uh, play off that as well as most duets, whether it's instruments or singing or piano, you, that, that makes things comfortable. Any other kind of competitions coming up or was this the big, uh, the big one? This was our, our last one. We had solo contest in December and then mm-hmm. we had ensembles, um, so on the instrumental side, we are all done for EDC competitions. Um, I know vocal ensembles and solos, they do theirs at the same time, um, will take place in April. So that's what most students will get, be preparing for. Um, we're going to be having the jazz band at the winter show um, the first week of March. I think mm-hmm. it's like March 9th or something. Yeah. They'll okay. be playing there. Um, and then we're just preparing for our concerts, which are also that first week of March, 7th and 8th. So 7th, 8th, 9th. When we get closer to that, we'll have you on again and then start uh, getting, uh, getting talking more about those concerts. And I guess uh, I'll say that I'll ask you this question, then I'll ask it again. But uh, your first year mm-hmm. as our band director here, it, how's, it's been a good year, hasn't it? It has. It really has. Like, honestly, it's been a really good year. I've really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, I know you're a Blackhawks fan. We talked about that once before, but we won't, uh, we won't get into that too much right now. But uh, now, with these uh, concerts coming up, I guess one last question on those. Uh, what uh, do you have planned? Uh, what is, where, and where at the Winter Show? Are you going to be in the South Arena, Main Arena? Or are we going to find out as we get closer to that? Probably that one because this will be my first Winter Show, so I honestly right. don't even know what you're talking about. Okay, well, I do because I've, I've been <laughs> gone through a few Winter Shows, right. so I know where you are. Yeah. You're... Um, so for the upcoming concerts, um, I'm – Definitely programming a lot of newer music that maybe the kids haven't uh, been exposed to. Uh, I got, I don't know, I'm just, we're just trying new things. And they're luckily just doing it, going with it, and happy to be along for the ride, I hope. And people got to come and just watch and see. Yeah. That's yeah. the biggest thing. Yes, yeah. And it's going to be great. They're always so excited to make good music and make great music with each other. So it's always a fun time. Well, we'll have, uh, so it'll be a couple of weeks. We'll get you back here to get, as we get towards the end of February and talk about those March concerts. And Rebecca, I appreciate it. And congratulations on uh, a good EDC showing. And uh, we'll talk again. And hopefully, uh, we got more good things to talk about. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. That's Rebecca Elliott. She's the band director here at Valley City High School. When we come back, we're going to talk girls' basketball. Also, coming up, we're going to be talking dance, the Valley City highlights, also on tonight's uh, Coach's Corner. Back with more on the Highlight Activity Network. And back here on Coach's Corner here on this uh, Wednesday night, uh, Paul McDonald along with uh, Jaden Johnson, our camera and IT guy, per usual, here for Coach's Corner. And we're now going to talk girls basketball. Coach Jimmy Howard joining us. How are you doing, Coach? Good. Belated happy birthday. You had a birthday here. Was it was last Wednesday night, and I didn't know it. So you got lucky that you didn't get happy birthday <laughs> sung to you while you were here. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> so what's it feel like to be 21 again? Oh, geez, if only. <laughs> Well, again, uh, like we talked with Coach Quist, we're not going to go two weeks back, but we'll go back to last week. And you two had the Friday, Saturday. Uh, you had uh, Fargo South on Friday night and Grand Forks Red River on Saturday. Fargo South, 86-47, I think, the final. Uh, have you scored 86 points in your uh, 70 years here? No, I, I, don't, I don't know when the last time uh, our girls' team has scored 86 points because I didn't we didn't do it the year I was the JV coach either here, but um, it was it was fun to see uh, the girls have put a lot of hard work in, and for them to finally kind of break the ice of, of with the shooting and and to get to enjoy that game, uh, it was it was awesome. I think you and I talked about the week before that thirty six minutes. Was this a 36-minute game? That was 36 minutes of being locked in both offensively, defensively, uh, making adjustments and being locked into what we have to do in those adjustments. Um, We simplified the offense a lot, which I think allowed them to be a little more free on offense. Um, And then defensively, we were able to lock into what we were trying to do. Uh, You know, the girls just, they put it together. It was awesome to see. And like I said, I mean, the credit goes to them. You know, they put the work in uh, and to finally, finally, like, get that monkey off their back with the shooting. You know, we just hadn't been able to put the ball in the hole. And, uh, you know, it just, 
I'm I'm just really proud of the girls and that effort on that night. And Fargo South, uh, for folks that maybe follow high school basketball uh, in North Dakota, Addie Wagner, a 2,000-point score for Fargo South, and I've seen her take games over, uh, hit it from 30 feet out and, and knock them down. Uh, she was struggling shooting, but your defense did a great job. But really, because if you contain her, you probably have a good chance of beating Fargo South. Uh, you know, she is the engine that makes that that makes that team go. But they got a lot of nice players. Uh, um, their post player number thirty two. Uh, she's really good around the basket. She's a really good rebounder. So we'd have some emphasis on making sure she hurt us at South with offensive rebounds. So we had an emphasis on making sure we could we we had a body on her in the in the paint. Um, Bryn Nelson. Uh, she's kind of a, a hybrid player. She plays in the post. She can play out on the outside and. Um, she had hit some threes against us, so we just kind of adjusted our coverage or tried to a little bit with her. Um, and then they had Laura Green back, um, who was a three-point shooter. She didn't play in their first game, and I think it was their first game back. So, you know, she had some rust, which which helped that they didn't have that extra shooter. And then, um, you know, they got some really good defensive players. They're quick. Mm -hmm. uh, they're aggressive. So, um we were just we were locked in. We knew that we needed to to stop Addie, and our our thing all week was just make somebody else beat us. And the girls really locked into that. And you know, uh, Tessa started on her. Greta Govin played a great game against her. But our bigs hedging uh, and and helping that was it was fun to see. And and they you know they just worked their butts off, and to come away with that and it, for it to end up being so lopsided um, was a surprise. Um, but just to let the let like the joy on their faces and to let them enjoy it from all the hard work this season and and the and the number of times we've come up you know ten points short eleven yeah. points short to finally just it yeah it was I'm so proud of of the work they've put in and uh, for it to all come together one night and that was 36 minutes of complete basketball. Put that one in the back pocket yep. and say, okay, this is what we can do. And they know now what they can do when they do put it all together. Next night, Grand Forks Red River. If memory serves, uh, the Riders are ranked third in the state. I think a, a very good team. You went up there. Uh, did you it, get what you expected out of the Rough Riders? Yeah, we knew they were going to be quick. Uh, they press. They're in, their, they're in their zone. They like to shoot it from the outside a little bit more this year because they don't have as much of the post presence. Um, you know, and, and they got five girls that can just go. And then they come off the bench, and they don't lose a lot of speed. So uh, we knew what we were going to get. I think coming off of the high from the night before, um, being a little bit tired. Uh, and so, you know, I don't think we were quite ready. We kind of got punched in the mouth to start the game. And um, we did find some stuff we think worked pretty well that we're going to try to use on Friday. So not all was lost in that right. game. Um, so we're excited to, to get another shot at them um, on Friday. Quick turnaround. I mean, less than a week, you get them again. So do you like that? To, that you get that kind of a turnaround? Or uh, no? <laughs> I don't know. You know, maybe maybe they'll come down here and so fresh in their minds that they might not come out ready to play, but I doubt it. Um, I don't know. It can, it can be a benefit, but it could also be uh, not as well. Yeah, it, It's uh, probably easier for practice because you just saw them, and so like yes. you said, uh, some things that did work we uh, will implement again. Uh, last night, Fargo Shanley, boy, I, I watched this game uh, last uh, the sat this morning, as a matter of fact. I sat and watched again. Game of runs. What a great high school basketball game. Yes, unfortunately, we came out on the, on the wrong end, but what a great basketball game last night. Uh, once again, uh, not quite 36 minutes. We struggled. We struggled with uh, executing the adjustments we were trying to make uh, with that side pick and roll. But um, once again, just we played so well shooting the ball. Um, and we had opportunities at the end, uh, a couple layups, some point blank stuff. Um, but, you know, the girls really played well. They executed. And when they did make a little bit of a run, and then it kind of went just back and forth most yeah. of the second half, like two points, tied, we're up two, they're up three, we're back up two. Um and so to see us just not like, oh, oh here comes Shanley again, uh, was was really nice to see. And the girls just played so hard. And, um, yeah, I, I like the aggressiveness we're playing with at home. And some of the girls, it's starting to, 
that uh, the the switch is starting to flip and they're getting it a little bit, and that's exciting to see too. Neither team had more than a five point lead in the second half until a minute to go in the game. Yep. Uh, and then that's when Shanley kind of started uh, hitting their shots. And of course, they had uh, Emily Shrema uh, on the inside, 21 of her 28 points game in the second half. And when you have a 6 4 player that can step out and hit threes, that's kind of tough to defend. Yeah, you know, we, we said, you know, just, just try to get up and, and make her put it on the floor, but make her go right. Um, just try to get a hand in her face and just try to obstruct the view. But, you know, some of the times when she'd roll, they throw it up. She's just taller. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we did try to adjust. Uh, we didn't quite execute it the way we had hoped. And so, you know, that did hurt us. And unfortunately, uh, we gave up a lot of baskets on that down the stretch. But, um, you know, they hit a three late in the game that kind of gave them that final push. Mm -hmm. And I, I watched it again this morning, and I kind of tallied those point-blank shots that we – where we were getting and you know it was like 62 65 with a minute to go if we get those point blank shots and and maybe it's not even that but um now you're sitting in the game and both teams have got to execute down the stretch and so um i'm very proud of the way they played again last night another one to just you know we, we can do it we know we can. we're that close and now coming up this weekend another friday saturday uh i believe like i said we talked about red river and i think grand fork central coming in on saturday no we that's we, right we go to cheyenne you go saturday. to cheyenne the boys have central yep. uh you go to cheyenne yep. um but let we already talked about red river you know what you're going to get with cheyenne yep. uh pretty much so it's uh, seeing these teams we're in the second half of the season now for the conference seasons you're seeing them for a second time uh no secrets is there no well we haven't seen Cheyenne yet, so okay, we okay. have we have not played them yet. So we get them Saturday, and then we get them the last week of the season on the twenty second, which uh, will be parents' night and senior night as well okay. for us uh, here at home. So um, we kind of get them quickly, like kind of like Red River, in a quick turnaround. Just the bottom line, coach. Uh, as you as you get ready, these these three games that just happened, and you got these uh, two more coming up. Do you see the that you mentioned that light switch and this is the time when you want that switch to come on isn't it yeah you know we want to be playing our best basketball down the stretch and then get that opportunity uh in the play-in game and just try to take that opportunity and, and come away with it and if you can get that play-in game whether it's on the road or at home but then you know you get to try to win two before you lose two and if you're playing really well you know, you might surprise somebody, and now all of a sudden you're sitting in a play-in game, and you're playing with tons of confidence, and, and anything can happen. So um, it is nice to see that the light switch is kind of is kind of starting to switch for some of them, um, and that we are playing some of our better basketball right now. Well, let's keep it rolling, Coot, uh, with a game Friday night, and then the first game, 5:45 will be the first game here on Friday night yep. and then on the road on Saturday. Coach, thanks for joining us, and good luck in your game tonight, too. Oh, thanks, and go Highlanders. <laughs> that is Coach Jimmy Howard from the Highlander girls basketball team. When we come back, the Valley City highlights. We're going to be talking dance. That's on the way next on the Highlander Activity Network. Back here on the Highlight Activity Network and Coach's Corner. And now we're going to talk highlights. The Valley City highlights is uh, next up. And uh, they've had uh, a busy last couple of weekends. A state competition up in Grand Forks uh, happened, I think, a couple weekends ago. This weekend, you went to Orlando, Florida. Come on, people. What's, <laughs> what's going on? How was the weather in Orlando, Florida? It was actually pretty cold. Uh, it was, was it pretty cold. Cool like cold or cool like neat? Like it was good. <laughs> like 52 degrees. Yes. Really? It's pretty yeah. cold. Oh, well, that still was probably about an 80-degree turnaround from uh, yeah. what, when you flew out on Thursday morning when it was 29 below zero. But we have uh, Brinklin Johnson joining us and Asia Barnett, two seniors from the highlights uh, joining us here. And before we talk about uh, the national competition that went on this weekend, uh, Brinklin, let's talk the state competition that happened a couple weekends ago. How did you guys as dancers feel uh, things went in Grand Forks a couple weeks yeah, it went really well. We ended up placing third in hip-hop, third in palm, third in kick, and then fourth in jazz. And overall, it was one of the best state weekends that I've experienced, and we really felt the team connection. So, super fun. And uh, Asia, remind me, or, or correct me if I'm wrong, but both the JV and the varsity placed in all the events that she just mentioned. And you were one of the few schools that did that, right? Yep, that's correct. So uh, how does that feel just to go up against, uh, I mean, West Fargo, the Pacatanas, they uh, seem to always have great dance. Just to be, to go there to a state competition and say, hey, 
our JV, our varsity, we can all do that. How does that feel for you guys? It feels really good, and our goal was top three, and obviously JV did really well too, so it was great. How, and how long have you been dancing with the highlights? Um, six years. You've been doing so. You were sixth grader, I'm guessing, or fifth grader, seventh, or seventh grader, seventh, seventh grader. grader. My math is off. I'm sorry. My math teacher father would kill me right now. And uh, Brinklin, you too have been uh, dancing about the same length, haven't you? Yeah. So now uh, we uh, fast forward after the uh, state competition. You went to Orlando, Florida, the national competition. Uh, let's just talk about before we let folks know how you did. Uh, what kind of competition did you see there? I mean, this was from all over the country, obviously. Uh, so were you seeing, wow, how did they do that? And, you know, things like that. Do you just kind of stop and watch other uh, teams do their routine? Yeah, it's a very busy environment, and you're watching girls from all over different states, everywhere from Florida to Texas and everywhere in between. So it's super fun to just watch everyone who's basically the same age as you and see like what they can do and then kind of compare yourselves. And it's, it's a really cool experience. And Asia, would you uh, say you maybe make some friends with uh, some on, on some of these teams or do you guys stay separate? I'd say we kind of do. Yeah. Like we're like mutual with each other, like say good luck and stuff to everyone. So yeah. So, and, and it's and do you maybe see stuff they do now you're senior so you can't do it but uh hey let's try that or have you done that before in in competition um yeah kind of i'd like we go back and watch some videos sometimes yep. from previous years and just look at what other people do like what we could do better yeah well now i'm not going to say it i'll let you say how you guys uh did at nationals uh in in high kick we ended up doing really well. We got seventh in the nation for the high kick category, which was pretty awesome. Is that one of the better uh, finishes that we've had at the Nationals, or have we done a little bit better before? Um, it's about actually the same. So last time we went down there, we also got seventh in the nation. So it was really cool to see, especially since every year it seems like the teams just keep getting better and better, and the amount of talent and more teams that come every year is really cool. Do you do the same four that you do at state at nationals or is it different so we're only allowed to bring two dances so we brought hip-hop and kick okay and hip-hop valley city's been known for their hip-hop yeah because i know we've won state championships with yeah. hip-hop uh, in the past uh high kick can you explain uh, either asia or brinklin explain what a high kick routine is like okay so basically you just kick like that's what it is <laughs> so yeah um yeah so know. one of the yeah. requirements um at nationals is that in your two minute dance routine you have to have 60 kicks yep. so they count your kicks during your dance and you have to meet that um amount you can obviously have more but a minimum of 60 kicks so how do you keep track <laughs> um so we like take a video and we like count like in practice we have like our phones out like tallying our kicks like making sure we have enough so okay yep. uh, now see i would probably pull a muscle doing it but is it just uh, as you would see maybe standing in line doing the kicks or or how how do you proceed with a high kick performance yeah so just like any of our other dances like there's movement going on at all times sometimes there's groups of people kicking um sections but there's also obviously the one line like you generally see so definitely kicking to different spots or kicking in random places but it's very lively especially our routine this year i feel like it's more of like a show so it's super fun so uh asia coming out of this your your last national experience uh, just uh, your your thoughts and i'll get yours too brinklin just your thoughts on uh your six years as a highlight um it was just honestly the best experience ever in this last nationals it was just like a great feeling we had the connection on the floor after it just felt so great we we're just really happy with our performance and how about you oh yeah the past six years have been amazing you definitely even though we're a team it's more of like a second family and just the all the friends you make and experiences you get like she said we definitely had a very big connection this weekend in Orlando so yeah did you guys both start out just for kicks and start out uh, with yep. the the youngins and, yep. and work your way up yeah and speaking of that coming up in April we'll probably talk more when we get closer to that but you have something here at the hack I think uh, for the for the kids in April right yep a big just for kicks um, competition actually so Teams from all over North Dakota and maybe even Minnesota, South Dakota come with their little dancers, ages kindergarten through 12th grade, and they come and compete. And it actually gets a lot of people here. Okay. Now, this Friday, are you guys going to be performing at halftime? Yep. We're going to be per performing our kick routine. So, yep. At uh, halftime of the girls' game, the boys' game, do you know which one or both? 
Um, I'm not sure about JV, but I know Varsity is performing at the later game. At the later game? Okay. Well, you just got to come and watch and just come and see the, the seventh the best team in the nation in high kick performing their routine here on uh, on Friday night. And again, the girls play 545, the boys at 730. And just show up and and watch all three basketball games and watch uh, our dancers uh, perform here coming up. Ladies, congratulations on a seventh place finish in the nation. And, and uh it's been great talking to you, and I know, Brinkley, we've chatted before, but <laughs> last year, you're, you're, you're done as a, would you come back, uh, you know, and help out uh, with the kick, with the dancing after you graduate? Is that something you've thought about? Oh, absolutely. I am actually one of the coaches for Just for Kicks here, and I love every minute of it. Asia, you too? Yeah, I would agree. I'd love to come back and, like, help next year and, pre- like, ne- like, next year and previous years too. Yep. Oh. It's definitely fun to watch all the alumni. It's, like, yeah. definitely activity where you don't just leave and never see them again, like, once you once you've been through it, it's kind of like yeah. a oh no! I know all of us seniors. It's kind of a bittersweet moment, it but is bittersweet. Yep. yeah. Well, I think I was at a VCSU game here the other weekend or last weekend, and Maddie Langamo was doing some coaching with some uh, of the little ones, and she's a former highlight as well. Ladies, again, congratulations on the great year, and uh, look forward to talking to you down the road. Thank you. Thank you. A couple of seniors from the Valley City Highlights, Brinkley Johnson and Asia Barnett. We'll come back and wrap things up on our Coach's Corner edition here on this Wednesday night on the Highline Activity Network. Back here on Coach's Corner, wrapping it up. And as we always do on our Wednesday night, as we wrap things up, we let you know what's coming up on the Highline Activity Network and uh, some things we got tomorrow night. We're going to have a girls basketball C-Squad, as they'll be taking on Lisbon here at the Hack, 615 tomorrow night. That'll be uh, here on the Highline Activity Network. And then Friday night, triple header, boys junior varsity against Red River, and then the, the girls varsity against Red River, and then the boys varsity against Grand Forks Red River, 415. 545 and 730. So I have a triple header coming up here on Friday. And Saturday, there's going to be a junior high triangular. There's going to be six games. They're not going to split the court in half. They're just going to play all six games on the full court. And that'll start at 9 o'clock in the morning. So we'll have a coverage of that. And then junior varsity boys against Central at 330. And then the boys at 5 o'clock here on the Highlander Activity Network. And that's what's coming up on Saturday. Of course, we'll be back next Wednesday night with another edition of Coach's Corner. And some other things, just a reminder, the the uh, wrestlers, they are going to be in Devil's Lake this weekend at the EDC tournament. So the East Region Tournament coming up and we'll talk with Coach Aaron Larson next Wednesday and see how many Highlander wrestlers are going to be on their way to the state tournament. We do know that they will be going as the number two seed out of the East to the state tournament in the dual portion of the state wrestling tournament, which will be coming up at the end of the month in February. And of course, gymnastics, they too are going to be, I think the 20th of February is the EDC. That'll be going on in Wapaton. And we'll be talking with Coach Johnny Tobler here in the next couple of weeks about the gymnastics team as they get ready for the postseason. And of course, another run at the state tournament, which will be the state competition will be in Dickinson coming up at the end of February. So that's just some of the things on the way. We'll be talking more with our coaches. And and of course, we, uh, we talk, we've got band concerts coming up here in March. We'll be talking with Rebecca Elliott about that. And also we'll be talking more dance later on in March as they get ready for that big Just for Kicks competition here on April 5th. That's going to wrap things up for this edition of Coach's Corner. Again, my thanks to Jane Johnson, our cameraman and technical director, and, of course, the coaches that joined us tonight, Alex Quist and Jimmy Howard, Rebecca Elliott, our band director, and our two dancers, Bricklin Johnson and Asia Barnett, joining us from the Valley City Highlights. And, again, congratulations to Coach uh, Megan Gilbertson and the Highlights. Seventh place finish in high kick this past weekend at the National Tournament. We'll be back again next Wednesday night at 6 o'clock for another edition of Coach's Corner here from the hack on the Highlander Activity Network.